you're like me, and you're an extremely shy and anxious person whose interactions are guarded, but you also long for the days when you can step confidently out into the world, well, here is a quick lesson on what not to do when traveling in Europe. So let me first mention that I am absolutely terrified of heights. And by extension, I'm not a big fan of flying. That's a small part of why I travel in Europe and not the US. I like being a passenger and I like to travel slowly. I would have to drive everywhere if I wanted to travel America in comfort. There's Amtrak, but you know, I did that before and it's a no. I took an early morning October flight with Lufthansa out of Lisbon heading straight for Frankfurt, Germany. I had planned this for some time, returning to the city I was born in for my 40th birthday. I had no real plans upon arrival, but I thought of this trip as more of a reflection of my life up until then. The weather was gloomy and I apparently booked a hotel in the boring part of town. I did absolutely no research before going, so I sort of deserved the outcome. Two days of filming pigeons at the park and several poor attempts at speaking German, it was time to head back to the airport and home to Portugal. But I didn't in fact get home. Instead, I found myself riding across the dark German countryside, heading south towards Zurich in a cramped Flix bus. So let's back up. Let me explain this a little better. Do you remember when I mentioned that I'm afraid of heights and I don't care much for flying? Okay, well here's what happened. I had a few shots of Johnny Walker Black at the airport to prepare myself for boarding. I was very proud of myself for timing my consumption because the plan was to be sitting just right when the plane took off. I'd also been listening to the 2112 album by Rush because just minutes before that I had completed Ready Player One for like the 18th time. If you read the book, you'll get it. So I'm in my own world, surprisingly enjoying the first song on the album when I hear an announcement for my flight. I could hear a German woman's voice over the loudspeaker. So I'll paraphrase what she said. Dear passengers, we are having some technical difficulties and we can't open the door to the plane. The passengers currently on the plane are not able to get off. Now, I laughed at first because of how blunt and transparent she was about the situation. An American airline would have just been super vague. Regardless, all I heard was, Dear passengers, when we reach 37,000 feet, the door is going to malfunction, open, and you are all going to fly out of the plane. For all you people who aren't anxious and aren't easily frightened and aren't afraid of heights, I understand the doors couldn't open due to positive pressure applied to the outside of the door, and the lock, and science, but the fear of heights is an irrational phobia, so here we all are. I immediately picked up my phone, called home, and explain that I would be taking two buses to get home from Frankfurt to Lisbon. Yes, I allowed my fears to get the best of me, and this was a big part of why I pivoted on the purpose of this channel. What followed this missed flight was an adventure full of pain, anger, intrigue, and some growth. It definitely changed me. I stood outside in the rain at a questionable bus depot near downtown Frankfurt. I waited for my bus and this is two hours after arriving from the airport. There were several large crowds of people standing near my stop, and to my horror, they were all getting on the same bus. I stood there fighting back a panic attack, holding on to my last hope that maybe I wouldn't have anyone sitting next to me. So I'm about 250 pounds now, but at the time, I was closer to 280. The weight sits well on me, though. You wouldn't think I weighed as much as I do. That's what happens when you're a muscular fat guy. Anyways, I get lucky and nobody sits next to me. My anxiety level just dropped. A few stops later, a very small lady gets on the bus, finds her seat next to me, says hello, leans her seat back all the way, puts a mask on, and goes straight to sleep. I got real lucky here. I even got a little bit of sleep. A few hours later, I got off the bus in Zurich to switch to my second bus which was 80% of the ride. Flixbus must have partnered with a third-party service because this new bus was a nightmare. The whole point of using Flixbus was to enjoy the Wi-Fi service that came with the purchase. The first leg of the journey to Zurich, it was perfectly fine. The entire remainder, all the way from Zurich to Lisbon, was going to be with no Wi-Fi and no chargers, no restrooms for number two, and no stops long enough to find a restroom. Oh, and no water. 
To top that off, the bus attendant was harassing the women on the bus, left an African woman at a stop due to a mix-up, and then laughed about it as we drove off, and later kept asking me why I was going to Portugal to visit if I didn't speak Portuguese, which I thought was weird since I didn't say I was moving there. I even had an American passport. I thought it was weird. My response? Are you asking why people travel? Of course, nothing. At this point, my anxiety is 8 out of 10, and it stays like this until we get a few hours into France. And by the way, now I have somebody sitting next to me. Just shy of reaching Valence, we stop for an actual break at a large rest stop off the highway. It looks just like a rest stop in the US. And so I get off to catch my breath and examine the state of my mental health. I realize I'm not going to be able to do this for 30 more hours. So I purchase a flight for the next day out of Lyon, France, and I plan to get off the train in Valence. From Valence, I'll be able to take a train directly to Lyon. Once we arrived in Valence, I told the very bad bus attendant to open the storage so I could get my backpack and that I was getting off here. He asked why and I said, I just want to get off here. And I walked from the bus stop towards where I saw restaurants. I got lucky and found a hotel right across the street from the train station. My entire stress level went back down to two or three. I got something to eat and I passed out. The next day I checked out the city a bit and made my way to the train station heading for Lyon. The ride was smooth like butter on toast, it was beautiful. A bit cramped, but I opted for the first class and I was rewarded with a few extra centimeters of wiggle room. 70 minutes later, I was in Lyon. Lyon was beautiful, I felt at home there, the people were really pleasant. My anxiety remained stable as I took the express train directly to the airport. I decided just to hang around the airport for a few extra hours to kill some time and to prepare myself for flying. My flight was scheduled to leave at 9.30 p.m., but got delayed several times until it ended up just being canceled around 3 a.m. Yep, that happened. Long story short, the airport got me and 30 other passengers rooms at a cool looking hotel on the outskirts of Lyon. It would be another three nights before I made it home. I decided to make the best of it and explore Lyon while reflecting on my fears and bad decision making. I learned a bunch about myself during that entire week and I decided to use this experience as an opportunity to shift some of my future plans. A few days later, I was home in Lisbon. That unplanned journey had changed me so much that after all that running around, I decided when my plane landed, I would take the Red Line subway home from the airport. Why not add a little more adventure? Waking up the next day, I could see something had changed inside of me. I began to realize that there was a way for me to enjoy my new experiences while partnering with my mental health. I could take the subway to grab some coffee and make it a challenge without getting carried away. I could plan a trip to Barcelona and do so while anticipating any triggers for my anxiety. Even riding public transportation in Lisbon has taught me a few tricks that help keep my anxiety levels down. First, I let the faster walking 9 to 5 crowd go ahead of me. Second, I stand up if I know the train is going to be really crowded. If I don't do this, I'll panic when it's time for me to squeeze out of my seat and get off the train. And third, once I get off the train, I let the crowd walk up the steps to get out of the subway. Another helpful tip I have for myself is to listen to fictional podcasts and audiobooks while I'm on the train. I disappear into my stories, and sometimes I'll even bring people into the story from the train. This helps to lower the chances of a panic attack happening to me while I'm on the train. Same with the people who look at me and don't break eye contact. It's not like America, where it feels like a contest of who's going to look away first. They just keep looking at you here. So I'll just close my eyes, lean my head back, and reabsorb myself in my media. Coming from the southwestern US, I'm just used to having more personal space. I'm guessing it's less of a shock for people that move here from New York City. I mean, if you go to the park in Phoenix, you pretty much have the entire park to yourself. Even riding a Phoenix Valley Metro bus, you would find that it would take until there was no option left before anyone started to sit next to you. This is not the case in Lisbon. Public services appear to be used as intended. Another tool I use is I carry a rolling suitcase that converts into a backpack. I do this for a few reasons. First, if people think I'm a tourist, they will simply avoid me or go around me. Second, when I'm standing on the train, it offers me a bit more personal space as I keep the suitcase positioned directly in front of me. 
Third, I sweat much less if I'm pulling the bag rather than carrying it. The reason I need it to turn into a backpack is because I hold my DJI RS3 gimbal with two hands, sometimes, and it's really heavy. Lastly, if I happen to find myself somewhere sketchy, I can always wear it as a backpack or on the front of my body to prevent it from being snatched. Taking a Lyft Uber taxi or bolt on a poor mental health day is another tactic I've used in Portugal and elsewhere in Europe. I imagine myself being nicely dressed for dinner or an event and I don't want any problems when trying to get there. Remember, this is all to prevent stress from bubbling up. A consideration with rideshare and taxi services though, is that the person driving might drive so erratic that your stress level shoots up anyways. I like to make conversation with the driver if they seem like they're going to be road raging, and it usually helps them to remember that I'm in the car. I will usually only do a taxi if I can agree on the price before leaving my destination. This usually eliminates the chance of confrontation. When I first arrived at the Lisbon airport from Phoenix, I was charged 28 euros by a driver to travel two miles to my hotel. As you can imagine, I got real triggered when I learned the next day that that was like a five euro ride, maybe. To be fair, I later found out that the ride share drivers and taxi cabs are charged when they enter and exit the airport and they're punished by their companies if they turn down rides to or from the airport, which is pretty crazy. The utilization of parks and services in such a densely packed city has clearly given way to a culture where people are comfortable being near one another. Even though I'm a very shy person, I find this beautiful. Mental health is my priority and there are plenty of ways to explore while still maintaining my sanity. Navigating through a major metropolitan can trigger an anxiety attack, so it's important for me to explore the city my way. Small challenges here and there are what will change me as a person. Being more open continues to be my goal. I choose to take crowded trains rather than buying a car. I choose to head to the mall where people are gathered rather than buying all my stuff online. These choices are freeing something I've hidden deep inside myself. I'd like to find out what that is. I invite each of you to subscribe to my channel. Each week I will discuss how I am coping with my anxiety, how I make the most out of life being this shy, and how I will no longer allow fear to define my path forward. Please check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and see my blog at travelandmath.com. Thanks everyone.